Joining us now is Ojinika Oji Ope with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jinek. Dr. Abati, good morning. How are you this morning? The lady in red. Yes, it's uh, America's Day, America color. It's oh, red, you yes. You made your choice. What? what? What is my choice? Today is DJ now. Well, you know that. It's between red and blue. Well, I don't know. It's red. one of the colors. We yeah. have green for Nigeria, we have red for America. Bimbai, good morning. How are My you this dear, morning? I'm great, and yourself? Fantastic this yeah. morning. Good Loving morning, Rufi. Ginger, as always. I'm always ginger. Do you know that, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> good morning, Rufi on fire. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, all right. Let's begin what's trending. It's election day in America. And as Americans head to the polls to vote for the country's next president in a highly competitive race between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, a musician, and politician Jamilu Magia in the northern region of Nigeria has composed a song to campaign for Donald Trump. The song urged voters to vote for Trump today. Let's take a look. Dr. Sam Amadi made yes. the point that America being the superior power yes. in the world, everything that happens in America from Coca-Cola to presidential yeah. election has become an occasion for a global mm -hmm. cultural fiesta. Look, in, in the front page of uh, I newspaper in the UK today, mm -hmm. you know, they were speculating about Americans, uh, Brit the British. You know, most of them saying they prefer uh, Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them saying, well, they prefer Trump. Some other people say Trump will win anyway. They don't have a vote in the matter. Nigel Farage mm -hmm. saying, oh, Trump must accept. You are my friend. Whatever the election result has. So all over the world, all the way to Japan. Yes. <laughs> and here in Nigeria, you find those children also led by some adults singing that is Donald Trump. They, that is they, Donald Trump. I hope they are aware of the analysis <laughs> that Trump is not likely to be good news for <laughs> African countries and not even for Nigeria. And uh, Rufai made the point, these children, they were carrying yeah, flags. Yeah, yeah. We said it here. Yeah. Yes. In the proof of evidence that uh, we <laughs> hope the Attorney General <laughs> will throw away now, one of the charges against uh, <laughs> the minors that uh, the President has now said should be pardoned was that they were carrying 76 Russian flags. Yes, that's what it was. Did you count them if you count that, those people. How many did you? They were, they were. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and they are that's how, that's how <laughs> ridiculous some of them are minors. Some of the things we but, have found ourselves. But anyways, <laughs> meanwhile, U.S. Vice President and Democratic presidential candidate Kamala Harris paid tribute to her late mother, Dr. Shamala Goplan Harris, an Indian immigrant whose courage and dedication to her family continue to inspire her. Harris reflected on the values her mother instilled in her, from honoring her heritage to championing causes. 
Well, let's take a look. Something cracks open inside you when you become a mother. You realize long after you're gone, these children will be your legacy. This mother came to America at 19 years old. She stood five feet tall, but she stood tall. Becoming a cancer researcher, birthing two daughters, Kamala and Maya, and with them, she birthed her legacy. She taught them to believe in themselves and to stand up for others. It's what made Kamala become a prosecutor who fought for justice, an attorney general who took on corporations to protect working people, the senator and vice president who stood up for women's rights. And now, in this moment, Kamala Harris has a new way forward. She says every worker should be able to provide with dignity. That's your right. Every generation should do better than the last. That's your legacy. Every American should be able to buy a home, start a business, and save enough to invest. It's time for a new generation of leadership, one of optimism and belief in a better future for all Americans. This daughter of Shamala, this daughter of the American story, is ready to lead us forward. Phenomenal. I mean, what a way to honor your mother. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a special, special tribute. Freedom. Yep, uh, voiced by Viola Davis. Yes. Listen, you know, when you and watch this... And the song this, is Beyonce. And yeah. the song is Beyonce. Beyonce. Yeah. And, it, you know, this video we just watched, for me, embodies the euphoria that we've all gotten sucked into globally yes. with regards to this election. America's greatest um, export, I believe, is culture, branding, uh, the ability to start conversations and lead conversations and communication. And this is what, for me, this is what this is. And she's celebrating her mother. She's embracing her heritage. Remember, she hasn't actually opened her mouth to answer any questions about her ethnicity. Uh, so this, in essence, for me, was a beautiful way to address the fact that, okay, you know what, this is my ethnicity. This is where I come from. Honoring her mother, I thought it was a really, really beautiful um, tribute. Uh, is this what it'll take to win the election? I don't know about that, yeah. you know, but uh, I, or nonetheless, really, really enjoyed right. this, uh, even though I lean more blue, but um, I, <laughs> yeah, I thought yeah. this was a beautiful package. Well, all right. Uh, Dr. Abati, you said well, you, you had Just to make a, a very brief comment about the American dream. You know, many people come from different parts of the world to achieve, to pursue the American dream. Now, Professor Donna J. Harris, that's the name of the father. Came from uh, St. Anne Bay in Jamaica. Jamaica. And then he, he, he got to America. Then uh, Dr. Shamna uh, Harris, the mother of uh, Kamala, came a 19 year old from India, mm -hmm. from Jamaica to India. They met to produce this American dream. Yes. And that dream may be achieved uh, with uh, Kamala Harris, if she wins, becoming the first black woman to become American president. I think we are on the course of history yeah. uh, in the United States. We don't know how it will end, but if Kamala Harris emerges, it will be a major triumph for immigrants. Absolutely. And it will be a, a statement to people like Donald Trump uh, who do not like to see immigrants. Well it will be a new day in America when this is all over. If I you see, that's the American spirit that their bodies. And I remember the moment when it was time for Barack Obama to emerge in 08. The same story. A young Kenyan from the Lower Tribe came to America, same to study. He met this girl, you know, from Kansas and Durham. They fell in love, had this child called Barry, Barack Obama. He wrote about that in a book called Dreams of My Father. And it's that America, that America that was a home to a lot of people that were persecuted after the Second World War. The likes of Albert Einstein would not have had a home if not for America. The America that gives a solid footing to everybody. And that's why when Trump preaches this rhetoric of hate against immigrants, mm. America is an immigrant nation. Look at Albert Einstein, immigrant. Look at Trump himself. His forebears came from a village called Kalstadt in Germany. Look at Kamala, Indian, Professor Harris in Jamaica. Look at America. It's a mixed country. Yes. It's a melting it's a pot melting. of everywhere. It's that dream 
that America constantly tells people that if you, if you work hard at it, you can try and you can make it if you try. America is not a country of hate. Mm -hmm. It's not a country of fear. It's a country of the pilgrim's pride. All right. Look at America standing tall. When Scott Francis Key wrote that Star Spangled Banner poem, when he talked about the blitz of Baltimore, and after all that had gone on that night in Baltimore, that flag was, was still there. And that's why he said, we'll see, can you see the star spangled banner? Yeah. And that's right. what America is all that about. That is what America is. Yeah. So America. not about hatred. <laughs> Are you talking beware. about Jesus? Beware. 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 All right, all right, all right. <laughs> talking about that. Well, we uh, wish Americans good luck. Let the best candidate win. Speaking about treason, flags, and all of that, I knew you guys took this, but we would like to highlight what Nigerians have said about the release. Well, following the directive by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who on Monday ordered the immediate release of minors said to be and bad governance protesters held in prison for over 90 days. Nigerians have reacted while well, in a briefing to State House correspondents. The Minister of Information, Mohamed Idris, said that President Tinubu issued a directive to the Attorney General of the Federation, Latif Fagbemi. The President has directed that these children, these minors, be released immediately. This is, of course, without prejudice to whatever legal processes there are. Of course, if you look at this issue, there is the legal side of it, but there is also the, the human angle, the humanitarian side of it. Mr. President has directed that whatever the circumstances are, let the minors be released. The Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs has been charged, has been directed by the President to ensure that they have safe return and reunion to their family members. All right. I mean, I think it's a great development. When I saw the story yesterday, I was, my heart was at rest. I mean, um, knowing that the president is listening. As much as the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs is going to go, you know, make sure that they are home, I hope that there's also some sort of rehabilitation program that will be set aside for these uh, children. I'll take some reactions. This is from Samuel, who wrote, releasing them is good news. And kudos to the lawyers and Nigerians that lamented against the evil perpetrated to the kids. But the question remains, what can the government use to compensate the mental and physical damage done to them? How can they avert the trauma as they grow? Another Twitter user, Mega Mixer, wrote, After they have successfully demarketed Nigeria, I guess they have now concluded and realized that protests should not be treason in Nigeria. I repeat, those who purportedly fought for democracy and the rule of law in Nigeria are today fighting the same democracy and the rule of law. They champion protests at a time, but today protests are seen as a weapon fashioned against them. Time is indeed the true test of one's identity and true intentions. Another Twitter user, Dr. Ife Akandu, wrote, so over 30 minors were detained by the police for months simply because they expressed their right to free speech and to protest against bad government. These harmless minors were charged by officers of this same Tinubu government of attempting to overthrow the government of President Tinubu. These minors were so charged and neither the president nor the AGF bothered to find out the profile of the people charged with attempting to overthrow a democratic government. It took outcry of Nigerians for the president to get to know the profile of those charged of attempting to overthrow his government. It is indeed a sad day for Nigeria, so heart-wrenching and destabilizing. Then we have the police chief saying the malnourished children were acting drama by pretending to taint or faint in open court. There is no better definition for wickedness against citizens. I mean, uh, this um, gentleman's tweet, uh, Vimbai, I 
thought was quite apt in terms of profile. But still, I don't think we actually have the profile of these people that, you know, made these children go out to carry out these uh, flags or Russian flags that they now say is uh, a treasonable offense. Do you really think that the identity, I mean, I know that they're going to continue on with the investigation, but the main thing is that it took 90 days for these young children to be kept or held, 97 days, I believe, hmm. to be held in prison. And yet we have no identity or no profile of those that made these children do what they did. That is, for me, that's the root cause of the, the, the core of this issue mm -hmm. at the moment. Uh, when we look at these children, uh, you know, first of all, I, I, we said it earlier here on this program, we hope that when we do see them at Asu Villa, first of all, we hope they are not wearing a shwebi. And, uh, that's you know, what's we, we probably hope, going to happen. No, uh, you, because, you, 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 you know, the I amount of surprised. resources that's used to do all of that is something that could be used towards, you know, getting them on, on their way. Uh, the conversation now for these children is around, like you correctly said, rehabilitation and compensation. Yes. I know Femi Falana is, uh, you know, leading the advocacy for uh, financial compensation for what these children have, have been through. And I think that's a very important conversation. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? And that's what needs to happen. And let's follow that process through to make sure there's accountability. But it still goes back to the fact, and I'm really glad that our guest, Dr. Beatrice Pogo, also uh, dated it back to the 1980s, to the Maitatane uh, riots in Kaduna, and said that this is not the first time that we're seeing children, especially in the north, being sent out to protest, mm -hmm. being sent out to, uh, you, you know, to be, to commit all sorts of acts in the name of politics or in the name of... So it, it's all very unfortunate. But for me, the big question is still who hijacked the protest? That's the point. Who sent them? Well, all right. Well, in the meantime, the First Lady of Nigeria, Senator Oluremi Tinubu, and the National Security Advisor, Nuhu Ribadu, a set to lead a national prayer session <laughs> aimed at addressing Nigeria's numerous challenges. The event, organized in collaboration with Christian and Muslim leaders, is intended to seek divine intervention as the country faces ongoing crises affecting various sectors. While well, a cross section of Nigerians have reacted to the development, including former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, who mocked the idea in a post on X, saying that. That the administration is in a hurry to take over power without a coherent plan. His tweet reads in part, like many fellow Nigerians, I firmly believe that we find ourselves in this current economic turmoil due to the Tinubu administration's hasty ascent to power devoid of a coherent plan. Isn't it fascinating how the so-called tested Tinubu administration's only policy response seems to be a national prayer led by the first lady and the NSA just a mere 24 hours after I propose my alternative solutions. What a bold strategy in my humble interpretation of the scriptures. Prayer indeed serves as a noble path to follow. However, the sacred text also counsel us to engage in diligent labor and hard work. Rufai, you know this happened, I mean, I believe it was just two days ago or three days ago when Atiku Abubakar, you know, you know, proposed some policies and Bayo Nonuga attacked him. I don't know if you saw that tweet where Bayo Nonuga attacked him, but of course reactions have trailed this national prayer. Let me take this tweet from Badebo Rose Vivo. He wrote, Israel is at war, deploying an iron dome not the Lion of Judah, <laughs> Saudi and UAE are creating new economic realities for their people. And there is Nigeria seeking national prayers, not because they believe in it, but because they want to hoodwink the people. What Nigeria needs is a change of leadership from those who pursue their narrow interests to those who are competent, have character, compassion, and an ambitious vision for their people. It is possible, Rufi. And you see, that's why for all the people that were going after Peter Obi, the truth is that man has said the truth. Mm. This is exactly the mindset we have. Uh, was it not on this table we heard the other day that some people wanted to go and pray against bandits, military officers, <laughs> if my memory serves me right? We have become a nation of jokes. See, 
I didn't see any big display in Saudi. I saw a country, only religious, I saw a country that was intentional about its success and mm. growth. Oji, 500 real notes. They wrote their vision 2030 on it. You know what the Bible says? Make your vision plain. This administration does not have a plain vision. Prayer, 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 prayer will not solve everything. See, if you want to move a mountain, it's not by saying, hey, God, move it, move it, move it, move it. No. God has given you the brain to think of the things that will help you move a mountain. By the way, we're talking about Israel having the Iron Dome shield. It's technology. Like fella will say, technology. <laughs> if you don't put things in place, and the solution to Nigeria's problem is clear leadership and thinking. President Tinubu has not laid down an economic road plan to bring Nigeria out of this quagmire. He keeps saying, oh, things are going to get better. Now that one we go shop. A man that says she has statistics, we go shop. It's not telling you to pray your way out of economic problem. So we are not ready. See, Saudi was intentional about pivoting. Saudi started going against some of their Itatu religious conventions. We're talking about WT. Women are going to play WT in scanty attires. Mm. Because Saudi wants to attract a lot of investment. As I got into Saudi Oji, I saw an Eminem show be advertised. That's an Islamic country. But an Eminem show with audio markers of what American artists were advertised. All right. So we are not ready. All right. And please, President, you know, we'll take feedback. All right. It's well, I, I want prayer. Dr. Abati's comment on this um, prayer. I don't know how okay, it is very that briefly. The NSA too is involved in the very briefly. national Now, in other countries, they have national prayer breakfast meetings. Mm -hmm. They have it in the U.S. every Thursday, every first Thursday of February. It was started by members of Congress and what they call the National Prayer Breakfast Association. And in some parts of, uh, of uh, the U.S., states also have National Prayer Breakfast Days. In other words, since Dwight Eisenhower, every American president has attended that. But it's a private thing, organized privately. They have it also in Australia by members of parliament. They have it also in the UK by members of the UK parliament. They just pray for the country. And I think that, look, yes, the point that uh, I, uh, Waziri Adamawa Atiku Abubakar was making is that, yes, there is uh, something to be said for prayers. But prayers should not become substitute for hard work. The question to ask is, First Lady and National Security Advisor, who is organizing this national prayer? I hope it's not a government project that will be budgeted for. And everybody will be falling. It will become a Chinubu administration project. <laughs> That's not how they do it in other parts of the world. Right. There must be a distinction between private issues and public issue. And Nigeria says in Section 10 that this is a secular state. There should be no official religion. So those who want to pray can pray. But let them not bring it into government. And no penny of the Nigerian government, whether it's security vote or not, must be spent. Okay. Now, in fact, the prayer must not take place inside government premises. <laughs> they should look for a neutral place. <laughs> but you cannot stop them from praying. After all, right. all there's freedom of religion, freedom of thought all right. in this uh, country. All right. And prayers will not address monetary policy. Prayers Absolutely will not bring not. down Fair price. Absolutely not. Prayers will not stop the Abim Power phenomenon well said, into Dr. which uh, we are all trapped. Well said. Only yesterday we took Peter Obi's story where he said he's going to uh, make night vigils or turn them into night shifts for productivity. And I think that is a, a key point as well. Well said. Well, let's take another story. This time in Equatorial Guinea, social media is awash with reactions following a massive sex scandal involving a top government official, Baltasar Ngonga. The embattled director general of the country's anti-graft national agency was being investigated for fraud. The scandal was uncovered when officials searched his house as part of the fraud investigation and discovered about 400 explicit videos allegedly featuring him and numerous women. The videos reportedly included sex tapes involving prominent persons such as the sister of the president of the country, 
the director general, of the police's wife, about 20 other country ministers' wives, his brother's wife, and even his cousin. And Gonga, who is 54 years old, is married with six children and is the son of the current president of the country's economic and monetary community of Central Africa. The videos, now widely circulated on social media, were said to have been filmed in his office, hotels, and toilets, <laughs> with all scenes <laughs> being recorded with the consent of the participants. Our favorite Niger wife. I, 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 did, I didn't mean to come to you with this story. But this story has gone viral. Yeah. Completely, I mean, shocking to yeah. see some of the videos that we saw on, uh, on social media. But I think there was another story that you know, broke my heart about one of the women who yeah. committed suicide, yet to be verified though. But I mean, this is what we see I mean, with men, Dr. Bati, I'm coming to you on, on a topic, Dr. because Bati's topic. we took a topic over the weekend, I mean, on Friday, and, you know, your fans were calling for you. I don't know if we should play that video. Should we play that video before we come to you, both of you? Should we play that video again? Because we have a clip of that video. Sure. Yes? Let's play that video of the doctor who said men should have sex 21 times to avoid prostate cancer. Men come to the clinic now and say, Doc, when I'm with my wife, this thing doesn't work. But when I go to my psychic, it wakes up. I just laugh because mm. that's a scientifically proven fact. Mm. Men with pro, uh, more than one wife tends to live longer. Don't take my word for it. The mm. research is abundantly clear. Go on Google. Mm. Men with two, three wives tend to live an average of seven and a half longer than men with one man, one woman. One man, one woman, that man's sexual activity is going to decrease after the age of 50. So when a man is not happy in the bedroom, his productivity is affected. Okay. Okay. When that productivity is affected, the impact on the economy dwindles. So even the government will not get adequate taxes. Men that are not getting enough erection, enough okay. ejaculation a month, will oh. develop enlarged prostate. Mm. When they develop enlarged prostate, that's when bad things happen. Mm. And it affects the quality of their life. Okay. What I say is what the left hand does, don't let the right hand know. Oh. You are not going to bring your other woman to your marital home. Okay. You want to have your other woman on a contract. Mm. You call her, she doesn't call you. She doesn't disrespect your home. Okay. So your woman is still your anchor. Yeah. But you know why you are doing it. And your woman is on your side. Yeah. She realizes it that you must get your 21 times. Yeah. And if for some reason she's not able to get it for you, yeah. hey, she knows where you are. All right. I've been by. I don't know if that's the video um, this anti-graft boss from Equatorial Guinea watched to make him Take believe that he can, you know, have sex multiple times like that. You know, so there, I, I know that this is like, there's been a lot of crews around <laughs> yes. this issue, but I, I just want to look at some more sort of serious sides about it very quickly. Uh, the first is that I think it's absolutely deplorable mm -hmm. that these videos that were taken as evidence for another investigation have been leaked all over yes. social media. I think it's wow. disgusting, it's de sad. degrading, yeah. it's unfair. And if it is true that one of the ladies has now committed suicide, that's sure. terrible. It's mm -hmm. absolutely terrible. Um, so that's number one. Number two, uh, Sex addiction is a real thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychologist. I can't uh, diagnose this right. man. But surely this must fall into the realm of addiction somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I so I absolutely. also don't want to make light of the fact that there are some people who struggle with it as a real addiction. Yeah. You know, so th that, that's my take on it. But I'm, I'm sure there are Dr. some Dr. Bati, Vimbai other... has talked about okay. sex addiction. Okay. So sex. We have very limited time. Yes. Let me just throw the line about, you know, looking at these serious issues. The first one is that we, it looks like we are now in modern day Babylon. The other day it was PDD. Now it is Ngunga. Mm -hmm. Now you know Babylon in the Bible, you know, a city of decadence mm -hmm. where people were misbehaving. The world has reached that point where values, standards have collapsed. The second point in that regard is that this man, Ngunga, mm -hmm. in Equatorial Guinea, he was a man in charge of the anti-graft agency yes. investigator, the equivalent of the EFCC of Nigeria. And then he got entrapped into his uh, libidinal snare, the wives of uh, inspector, the director general of police, the wives of ministers, 20 of them, yes. the sister of the president, I mean about 400 women, mostly wives. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there a question of blackmail here? 
Maybe. Ah, that's so an there, point there's a raised. question of blackmail yeah. here that needs to be investigated. There's also the question of morality. All right. The third point is about his own personality. Maybe to the point you made about addiction. This man has a wife and six, six children. All right. We'll and if I may say so, the wife <laughs> is a good specimen of Pukil <laughs> Okay. Well, I, right. I see you don't have I, I wish we had I a lot have of time. Ahead yes. ahead Continue, darling. Well, we'll follow up on the story. This I'd like crisis. to uh, thank you all, as always, for your contributions on What's Trending. I'm sure your fans enjoy that. Well, that's all I have for you guys on What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.